Can you give us a little bit of just a, a, a backstory on, on how we came to have an FM90 on March 15, 1976? Well, I came out of college in 1972 and took over the uh, so-called radio TV program from Jerry McDonough, who had been here for many, many years. And at that time, I said, well, why don't we try to get a radio station? And I said, oh, now that's way down the road. And I said, well, nothing's impossible. So taught classes, and then Bill Prather, who was the business manager that time, said, how would you like to go up to Washington with me and see if we can get some money to start a radio station? I said, okay. So we went up there, and the first time we tried, we didn't make it. But we didn't stop there. It took a while, and we finally got the station on the air. Not on the air. We started the station, which is just internal for the college, and then shortly after that, we got on the air and became a broadcasting facility. Um, reading some of the stuff that Chris has, has written, it's amazing of, of how long the process took and, 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 and the cost, that what it cost at, at the time was a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Of course, after we got the license, we were <laughs> wondering where are we going to get the money to buy the antenna. <laughs> so that's, money has always been the problem, but the people in Amarillo have always been very generous towards the college. They have, and they, they continue to support what we're doing, uh, and, and, and we're so appreciative of, of that Amarillo College continues to take care of FM90 and provide our students uh, the equipment to learn the skills they need to go out into the world, whether they're going to be broadcasters or if they're going to do something else that might require them to stand up in front of someone and present themselves. Right. Well, at first, uh, when we were just broadcasting on campus, a lot of the officials here didn't want the students operating because they said you couldn't tell what they were going to, what kind of language they were going to use. And I said, well, that's true in broadcasting. But I said, you need to give them a taste of what's going to happen if they get a job in broadcasting. So we finally convinced them to let the students go on the air. And I think about the second week after that happened, I was in my car downtown, and it was in late afternoon, and they were doing an interview and I forgot who they were interviewing. Anyway, some language was used, which shouldn't have been. And I stopped the car and ran and got on the phone and called him. And I said, what are you doing? <laughs> but those were part of the growing up stages. Sure, everybody has to, has to learn that. Um, I, I just find it to be amazing. I'm so glad you came in here today. And, and as a, I mean, seriously, FN90 listeners and, and those of you who went to this program, and we've, we've figured out that there are at least a 1,000 of us that have broadcast from these studios, mm. and, and uh, thank you so much for, well, for, for the work that you did to give us at Amarillo College an opportunity to, 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 to gain skills.